Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's lesson for honors math class on Monday 323. Uh, as you guys heard in my video today, uh, especially for you guys for honors, not a real easy way of finding to do a quiz on here. Um, so we're going to focus on basically just teaching the stuff we're doing, which is all 8th grade stuff. Uh, just basically so you have a background information. Um, so we're still going over the material. And you have a good understanding heading into next year's uh, ninth grade Regents Algebra class. So that's just focus on that you understand the material. So go ahead and try this entrance task. Pause the video. Uh, take a minute to, to do it. But you're just finding the equation just like the homework you should have tried from Friday um, from page 11. Uh, so go ahead and pause it. And we're back. So I'll go over the answers on how to do this entrance task. Um, make sure you did it. We know that for these linear equations, we're looking for an equation that's in, in the form y equals mx plus b. And then if we can find what that m value and the b value is, then we successfully have our equation. Now b is on the y-axis, so if we're lucky enough to have a point that is located on the y-axis, that tells me what b is. And sure enough, if you plotted the point 0, 4, that is on the y-axis because it would be over 0 and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. So that point is on the y-axis. So anytime you have a 0 in the x um, column, then the corresponding y value is what b is. So in this case, I know that b is 4. So now I just got to find m. And m is the change of y over the change of x. So certainly you can do it using the equation that I showed you guys, which was y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And pick any two points and that'll work. So I got some negatives in here regardless either way. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. So let's say I pick these two points y sub 2 is negative 5 minus y sub 1 is negative 2. So we're really careful with minus a negative. x sub 2 is 6. x sub 1 would be 4, so minus 4. So that's going to give me m equals, when I do keep change change up here, or use your calculator, you're going to end up with a negative 3 over 2 for my m value. Now, by the way, you can also is another option sometimes just kind of look at the columns on the side and see how much y is changing so like here you can see from that point to that point y went down negative three and from that point to that point x went up two so there's your change of y negative three over your change of x two All right and you pick a couple points to make sure it really works yep it went down another three it went up another 2, so negative 3 over 2. So there's a couple different ways that you can do um, m, the change of y over change of x. You can use the formula, or you can kind of look at it like that as well. So now that I know my m and b values, I now know my final equation is y equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. All right. Very good. So here's your entrance task. Let's take a look at your homework answers from the end of the lesson on Friday. I'll move it up so you can see the bottom ones in a second. But there's the answers to the first ones here. So for every one of these, I found out what M and B were. So for example, this one it goes through the origin, so B would be 0. So you could think of this as y equals 2x plus 0 also. And m, if I take two points, it went up 10, it went up 5 here. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so my change of y over change of x is 2. So b is 0, m is 2. That's how I got my equation um, for that one. And I have the work done out for the last one. Number 8 was definitely the hardest problem on that page 11. I'll even see if I can maybe zoom in a little bit here on my work. Let's 
so on this last problem here, um, the first thing I had to do was find m. So I picked the last two points and found m. m is 2. And then I knew I have y equals mx plus b. And all I did was replace the m with 2, the one thing I knew. And then I picked a point. I just picked this one. I could have picked any of them. I picked this one where I plugged in 7 for y and x for 5 because that is a solution. You could pick any solution, but that is one solution to this equation. That's what, after all, what the table is. There, there's ordered pairs that are solutions to this equation uh, that I'm looking for. So if I plug in that x and that y and that m, that leaves me with just one unknown, whatever b is here. Now I can use our good old friend algebra to just get b alone. So 2 times 5 is 10. I take away 10 both sides and I get b is negative 3. So there's my answer to that one. And that's one of the harder ones when you don't have a 0 in the x column. All right. Okay, let's move on to today's notes, which again you already have in your packet on page 12. And it seems like it's going to be harder, but it's really not too bad. Um, on page 12 here, we have our notes on graphing linear inequalities instead of linear equations. It's 90% the same. There's just a couple things to keep in mind here. You can see as I move up, you have an example as we talk here. This would be how we would graph the inequality y is less than 2x minus 4. Now, if it was y is equal to 2x minus 4, it would just be this line here. But you'll notice that I have a dotted line instead, and I also have some scribbles below it. That's what we call the shaded region. All right? And it, this goes right hand in hand with when you graphed in our inequality unit when we graphed on the regular number line. If you remember my old math teacher, Mr. Gulick, that used what we called the more chalk method, more chalk, less chalk method, that these symbols here use less chalk to make these on a chalkboard, and it takes less chalk to make a dotted line. These ones require more chalk to make, so you would use a solid line, more chalk. And really, it works the same way. The reason is the ordered pairs that would work for this inequality, that would make this inequality true, would be any point, any ordered pair in the shaded region. So anything up to the line, but the reason it's dotted is because points on the line would not work. Okay, A point on that line would make the y equal to 2x minus 4. And that's the same reason that we use solid lines when we have less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, but if this was less than or equal to, if there was a line there, then we would have made this solid, and then any point in the shaded region would be a solution, or anything on the line also would be. All right? So you end up graphing the line the exact same way, and then you just got to ask yourself, is it going to be a solid line or a dotted line? And then am I going to shade above it or below it? So it says here where it kind of makes sense if it's less than, and you're doing y is less than, then you want to shade all the y values that are less than that line. Well, the y-axis goes up and down. So whenever it's less than or less than or equal to, you would shade below the line. And if it's ever greater than or greater than or equal to, you would shade above the line. All right. So that's going to be um, how we do these problems. Let's take a look at example two. It's already done for you, I think, in your notes pack there. So example two, you can see we have y is greater than or equal to 1 third x plus 1. So it's more chalk, it's a solid line, it's greater than or equal to, so we would shade above that line. And now, any point in the shaded region or on the line would make this inequality here true. So all the solutions are anywhere in this shaded region or on that line. Alright, so that's how th these things work. It's basically just adding the shading part and you sometimes you have to consider if your line is dotted or not. Now. One, this is a good time to talk about one last thing, too, that may come up on the problem I have you to try tonight. I'm going to have you try just page 13 all right, for tonight, just page 13. Um, but if I go to, you, you can do this if you want with me, you don't have to. But if we go to like page 18, which you did the entrance task on the other day, I just want to talk about a couple of different lines I'll use in different colors here. 
Um, like, let's talk about this line here. If I have this horizontal line that's going through 3, what would be the equation of this line? Well, a couple things here. This would be, if I look at different points it goes through, you're going up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1. Well, this has a slope then of a change of y of 0 and a change of x of 1. Well, 0 over 1 is equal to 0, so the slope is 0. And where does it cross the y-axis? b is um, at 3. So this would be an equation y equals 0x plus 3, but we don't typically write it that way, because after all, 0 times anything is 0. So this is the equation we typically see is just y equals 3. So this would be 0 slope. If you remember, we talked about, I think Adriana was the one with the long hair, about if she was running from left to right, I picked her because she had the long hair, so it looked like she was running. If she's running from left to right, if she hit a line like this, she'd be going uphill, so we called this positive slope. That would be a positive m value. If she hit a line that looked like this, okay, that's going downhill, so that would be negative slope. Well, what's the only thing between positive and negative? Zero, in which it's not positive or negative. So a zero would be like you're running on flat ground here. All right, so that's where your zero slope comes in. Now, another weird one is, well, what if I had instead this line? What would be the equation of that purple line right there? Well, that's an even weirder one yet. If you tried to do the M here, you would say that you're going over, or I'm sorry, up, one, let's say just pick a point, up one over zero, up one over zero, up one over zero. Uh-oh, don't put that into your calculator. Your calculator will break. It will give you an error. Are we allowed to divide by zero? No, you never can have a zero in the denominator. So we actually say, what's the slope of this line? You'd say that the slope is undefined. So everything starts to fall apart when you have one of these lines. You're going to learn later on next year in ninth grade algebra that this thing actually does, is not a function. All the other ones that we've done are called linear functions. A vertical line is not a function. So the slope's undefined. Here's the other issue. What would your y-intercept be? Where does it cross the y-axis? Uh, it doesn't. So what in the world happens here? This is a weird one. This is a vertical line. Now, if we can call this one y equals 3, the, the green line, y equals 3, if you looked at all the ordered pairs here, the x values continue to change, but obviously the y coordinate is always 3. So this is like negative 4, 3, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, 3. <sighs> Out of breath. All right, so they're all um, have a, 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 a 3 in the, in the y um, coordinate. Well, this would be all x coordinates that are 4. This would be 4, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, and so on. Same thing down here with negative numbers 4, negative 1, 4, negative 2. So, what you'd say is you don't really care about the y values. This is just the line where all of the x values are 4. So, this purple line is the one really weird one where you'd say x equals 4. So that might come into play tomorrow with like an entrance task or something. So I just want to go over these couple of weird scenarios of a flat line that would be zero slope, that's going to be a y equals a number, or a vertical line, which isn't even a function, and uh, you would use, it's the only one you can't put in y equals mx plus b form, you just have to say x equals something. All right, so go ahead and try for tonight, page 13, uh, it's just... I believe it's just four, four questions or four inequalities for you to solve and graph. And I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.